So in this talk, I'm going to consider a one-sided derivative test. Now, this is not very standard uh, terminology. It's sort of like the first derivative test, but not quite. So the first derivative test, which you probably have seen, is used to figure out information about local extrema of the function based on the sign of the derivative, the sign of the ordinary two-sided derivative on the left and the right of the point. Right? But this one-sided derivative test is trying to do something similar, but you're looking at the derivative at the point, and you're taking the appropriate one-sided derivative. Okay? So instead of taking the derivative on the left of the point, you're taking the derivative at the point with the left side, left-handed derivative. So suppose the left-hand derivative at the point is greater than zero. What can you conclude about the nature of the function? Max or min from the left, what can you conclude? You can't conclude anything. Well, you can conclude something. You can it's conclude. increasing. Well, it need not quite be increasing on the left. Right? But it will still be max from the left. The value at the point will be bigger than the values on the immediate left. Let me write that down. That in a moment. So f has... So in another video... I actually went from this direction to this direction, from here to here. But when I was going the other direction, I had to also include the case of equal to zero. Mm -hmm. uh, because we couldn't rule that out. But now we're going this direction. We actually make a strong assumption that the derivative is strictly positive, forces the function to have a strict local max from the left at the point. Why is that? Well, let me just write it down here. So, what are these one-sided derivatives? They are the limits as x approaches c from the left or the right of fx minus fc over x minus c. So, in the other video, we actually sort of looked at this as a starting point and we concluded something like this. We so put an equality sign assuming it exists. So, the reasoning here is going to be pretty similar. If this left hand derivative is greater than zero, that means the limit as x approaches zero on the left, so you put a minus up here, this limit is greater than zero, right? Mm -hmm. Which means that if a limit of something is positive, then that thing will become positive when you are close enough to the limit, right? Yeah. Which means that this expression, the difference quotient, becomes positive when x is close enough to c on the left, which means that for x close enough to c, the denominator we know is negative, right? Mm -hmm. The numerator therefore has to be negative, which means fx is less than fc for x to the immediate left of c. Okay. And that's why you get the strict local limits. Okay. We are not claiming that f we are not claiming that f is increasing on the left of c. Okay, because we are not comparing value values which are both to the left. We're just comparing c with points on the left. We're not comparing points on the left with each other. This one, what should the conclusion for this be? If, this, if the left-hand derivative is less than zero? Straight local mean yeah. from the left and C. You can sort of think like it's a decreasing function, but you can have examples where it's not actually decreasing and still satisfies this condition. What about the left-hand derivative being equal to zero? Hmm? Mm. Well, it can be either a local max or lo local mean. Or neither. It could be some sort of oscillatory thing, anything. So it's completely inconclusive. Okay? Maybe local max, local min, neither. Okay. The right hand derivative being positive. Well, that will be a strict local mean from, from the right. Mm -hmm. And you could do the same type of reasoning, right? If the 
right hand derivative is positive, that means that this limit as x proceeds from the right is positive, which means this difference quotient becomes positive for x close enough to c. The denominator is positive, so that forces that the numerator should also become positive for x to the immediate right of c, which means fx is greater than f of c for x to the immediate right. And so you get this. Let's write this one. What should this be? Half a straight local maximum from the right of c. Yeah. Sort of, again, this intuition is that it's kind of decreasing, but that's not quite the case. I mean, you cannot conclusively say it's decreasing on the immediate right, but that is kind of the intuition. And what about the right hand derivative being zero? Incom inconclusive. Inconclusive. Could be anything. Let's just uh, quickly do combined sign versions. Down here. Mm. So, left hand derivative, right hand derivative, and what's the conclusion? So, let's say positive and negative. What, what's the conclusion? That would be a local maximum. Yeah. Local mean. So this looks a lot like the first derivative test, right? Increasing through the point. Yeah. So it's actually, again, as I said, it doesn't actually have to be increasing on the left. Or the right, it's just sort of increasing just at the point. So at the point, it's bigger than stuff to the immediate left and smaller than stuff to the immediate uh, right. But it's not really you know, increasing in an interval around the point. Um, we can conclude that. Okay. Um, So how is it different from the, are we here? Yeah. How is it different from the first derivative test? How is this test different? Yeah. Uh, now sure. But what, what, what does the first derivative test look like? What, what's different in the first derivative test? You, for the first derivative test, you are looking at the sign of the ordinary two-sided derivative on the left or on the right of the point. Here you're looking at the sign of the one-sided derivative at the point. Okay? So that's different, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, then what does this difference make a difference? How it makes a difference? How does it make a difference? Well, there are situations where this test is inconclusive, but the first derivative test works. Why? If the derivative at the point is zero, which is the typical situation for differentiable functions, right? The derivative being mm -hmm. zero at a critical point, then the one-sided derivative test is pointless. It doesn't give you any information, okay? Whereas the first derivative test, which looks at the sign of the derivative to the left and the right of the point, usually does give you information even when the derivative at the point is zero, okay? So, for instance, you're dealing with polynomials and you're trying to figure out whether certain critical points give you local extreme values. For polynomials, the critical points will always have this situation. Mm. So this test is useless for polynomials, whereas the first derivative test is always going to conclusively establish whether you have local max or min or neither. Okay, so the first derivative test has has applicability to some situations where this is inconclusive. There are also some situations where this test works and the first derivative test doesn't. You could have some kind of functions which are oscillatory on the immediate left or right, or they are not continuous enough on the immediate left or right. So if you recall all the values of the first derivative test can fail, you can construct some examples where that test fails, but this one actually is conclusive. So each test may be applicable in some situations where the other one isn't. Now, another difference is that in the first derivative test, you can put equality signs here. Right. So here you can put equality signs and you just lose strictness. 
right? Mm -hmm. Whereas in this test, you cannot do that. If you put equality sign here, then it's not just that you lose the strictness, you actually get in the inconclusive case. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the equality sign cannot be included here. So that's like another minor difference. Because the first test, you're looking at the function on the immediate left, and you're allowed to be zero there. But here you're looking at the value only at the point, and, and at the point being zero is completely destroys all the information you have. Okay, so those are some minor differences.